Dear colleagues, uh, please sit. <clears throat> So we're very busy here. You can see lots of interest. That's yeah, good. Yes, Bobby. You didn't visit the Bill of Rain. He wasn't here. He was in, in, um, this year. No, I was here. We had other people go to that. Yes, I was sorry. I tried to go, but I couldn't. Get to both places at the same time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I was at Berlin, and I think there's one in Canada, yes. so, right? Um, exactly. Maybe. Yes. So I'm sorry. Yes. Very happy to see you. You too. You too. Okay. Yes. You may sit, okay. and we will start. Be careful because uh, that's a step here. Okay. <laughs> Dear guests, uh, we will start. Uh, Today, we have a panel discussion accelerating the global energy transition through international partnerships. So we will talk about partnerships a lot. Uh, the projects made in partnership uh, can benefit more clients. Uh, they can be more efficient and they can be less risky. Uh, the Ukraine and the whole world uh, are trying to get to cleaner energy. And you know that Ukraine set ambitious goals by 2050 in the energy sphere. And we will talk about uh, partnership in uh, energy sphere in a particular. Let me introduce my guests today. Uh, Monir Beaumont, Director, Sustainability Segment, Aveva. Roger Martella, uh, Chief Sustainability Officer, G. Vernona. Uh, Nadia Petruchenko, uh, co-founder and chief business officer, SPP Development Ukraine, and Victoria Savitskaya, chief sustainability and strategic engagement epicenter group of companies. Thank you for joining me today, and thank you for your uh, eager uh, to talk about partnerships and your particular examples. And uh, we will start from uh, Mr. Monir. My first question to you is... Uh, Ukraine set ambitious goals by 2050. And of course, it's impossible to reach without international partnerships. Can you elaborate on how your company's experience can help Ukraine uh, to achieve these goals? That's more, and we need to switch it on. Perfect. And Thank closer, please. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, partnerships are key, especially Please closer. Yep. Is that okay? Partnerships are key and very important, especially in the energy transition period, because there's so much change happening, and so many things that we need to account for and adapt to. And one example, uh, some of the examples we we're, we're doing is a lot of our revenue as an organization now uh, is coming from renewable sector. And it's not coming just from one place. We're a UK-based company, but we operate globally. So we work with a lot of our partners, ourselves as well, to be able to deliver to our to our customers. So we part, because we deliver and we focus so much on data and how can these new renewable companies deliver the services using data, we work with partners and we've our platforms have evolved. So now our, our actually platform has become agnostic. It's no longer just for us to use. It's for our customers and for our customers to bring in third parties, right? So whether they're local customers that they have or lo local partners, and it's all about giving access and sharing the information because without sharing the information, it's going to be very difficult to deliver, right? I, and I'm probably repeating myself about delivering. Uh, so when the new organizations start, when they want to do the engineering and design, uh, one one good example from that from that space is, for example, with Tenant in Germany, 
right? They're building floating offshore wind farms. They're working with the likes of McDermott. They're working with the likes of Petrofac, not locally in Germany. And yet they're using our technology, which is delivered through the cloud, to carry out the design, to carry out the handover, all the 3D design, the detailed design that gets done. You know, it's done by teams out in India or in Dubai, but being delivered to Germany, right? The construction is happening probably in China and again, being able to deliver. But the the reason why they can do this is they're using a single platform and share being able to share the data together. I agree with you. If something is happening in one part of the world, uh, the changes may be seen in the another part of the world. Uh, and uh, sharing the information is very important right now because uh, there is no need to invent something, the same thing again. And uh, the world is changing every day and we don't need to spare our time for inventing the same thing again. Yeah, correct. And uh, I mean, this brings me to, to my second example, if you like, uh, more with the energy transition and related to the renewable renewables whether it's solar whether it's wind it's generating electricity all the time so there's so much wasted electricity we're working with customers for example in the uk where they built six thousand solar panels and now we're helping them build a microgrid right locally but on a much bigger scale we're working with a company in the uk called high view power and high view power provides long-term energy storage by using liquid air. So they're taking all the extra electricity that's being generated by the wind farms and converting it into air, liquid air, freezing it, storing it, and then pushing it to the grid. But the reason why I'm bringing up this example and your point about reinventing, recreating things, the chief operating officer came from uh, SNC Lavalin and Petrofac, oil and gas. The program director came from BP, oil and gas. The IT manager came from Wally, oil and gas. And the reason what they're trying to do today is saying, we don't want to recreate everything, right? We always did all these big projects, big complex projects. Everything had to be very bespoke. Now we need to be able to design it and just order what we need off the shelf and modularize our delivery. And we're working to help them do that, right? From the, de the design phase, the, again, going back to the data, to be able to share it. So they want to do the engineering. They want to do the procurement, and that's coming globally as well. They will contract out the construction, but then they will operate the plants. Again, you've got the full data from A to Z, from the initial design to the delivery, but without having to do bespoke development. And because they're not doing bespoke development, even with the software, they're saying, we don't want bespoke configuration or setup. We want to take it as it is. It becomes cheaper and quicker to deliver and repeatable, right? And you can always repeat it. Absolutely. That's the new reality. And uh, I believe that uh, wise companies uh, have this uh, approach. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Roger, my second question is to you. Uh, let's talk about political environment and changes, or the recent changes in world politics. How is it possible to move forward uh, the clean energy agenda from your perspective, from your company perspective in these circumstances? Well, thank you for the question and thank you for the honor of inviting me to the Ukraine Pavilion. And it, it's always so inspiring to be here and, and see how Ukraine's leading not only in energy, but in agriculture in so many areas in, in the midst of these challenges. And when we think about moving forward, I, real optimist, um, you're right that there's changing political environments all around the world, 25%. And, um, I was just laughing because when I was here a few days ago, the microphone didn't like me either. It may just be me and the microphone, but um, thank you for sharing that, yours. That is the problem of Wi-Fi here. <laughs> That's not the whole problem. Sorry for that. So, so we had a lot of change this year, 25% of the world's population voting. So that's going to cause change all around the world. But the reason I'm so optimistic is because the private sector 
regardless of whatever's happening with politics, is going to continue to lead the energy transition. And so we're a global company. We help produce 25% of the world's energy in more than 100 countries. So 25% of our people, our customers, have gone to the polls. But nothing has changed in terms of how we're approaching both providing energy and decarbonizing the energy sector. The world needs energy. Um, Ukraine is the leading example. They're at the front edge of the energy transition. The work they're doing to provide energy to their people under the most difficult circumstances is nothing short of a miracle. But everybody's watching Ukraine and saying, what's happening in Ukraine could happen anywhere. It may not be a war. It may be cybersecurity. It may be um, growing demand because of data centers. There may be national security reasons, energy security. Um, people lack access to energy. So the world is committed at this point to adding capacity. We're going to double electricity by 2040. So what we're seeing from our customers is growing demand, growing need for us to produce more capacity, produce more gas equipment, more renewable equipment, more transformers, more grid equipment for Ukraine and for other places in the world. So that is going to happen regardless of politics. There's nothing political about the world needing energy. The question is, who's going to do it? That gets a little political. What parts of the world are going to lead here? That's where policies can help. That's where policies can be additive. That's where I think Ukraine is setting such a strong example because the world wants to help Ukraine be at the leading edge. So that's the energy side of what we're doing. But you also asked about decarbonization and climate change. And this is the other reason I'm an optimist, because we've gone too long without investing in energy infrastructure. That's why we haven't been able to solve for decarbonization. As we're putting more electricity onto the grid, we're decarbonizing the grid at the same time. Every dollar we spend on electrification is really a dollar being spent on decarbonization. And we can prove that. In 2023, we added 29 gigawatts of capacity onto the grid as General Electric. That capacity we put on the grid, the carbon intensity was 25% below the carbon intensity of the grid as a whole. So as we put more capacity on the grid, we're pulling down the trajectory of greenhouse gas emissions. We, we help Ukraine put in gas turbines, ultimately building renewable energy, make their grid stronger through grid equipment. We're not only giving them more energy, we're giving them cleaner energy. And Ukraine's going to come out as stronger with a model grid for the rest of the world that's going to be among the cleanest and the most reliable in the world. I'm very confident on that. So policy is important. It can help you succeed. It can help catalyze success. It's going to help decide which part of the world's meet the demand for energy. But the private sector is going to deliver regardless of policy. And, and that's the trajectory that we're seeing. Oh. Microphone doesn't like me. <laughs> okay, I'll try it once again. Um, I wanted to stop on uh, one point. Um, when Fact was uh, invented uh, in 2000 uh, year. I take this one. Uh, the idea behind the global compact was uh, that uh, it's impossible to make changes without business. Business is a driver for those uh, changes for better. And uh, that is why when you said that uh, who should do that, definitely business will work uh, and politics uh, I hope that they will not put obstacles to us uh, and uh, we will do everything by ourselves then. Uh, and uh, the second point, probably I forgot what I wanted to say uh, about um, this, but I will recollect a little bit later. So we've heard from international perspective uh, what can be done uh, to help Ukraine uh, to uh, meet its uh, goals. I would like to go to Ukrainian business. Uh, Nadia represents uh, Ukrainian business. Uh, could you please elaborate uh, on partnership aspect from your side? Uh, what kind of partnerships uh, you can make uh, with different stakeholders uh, in Ukraine or outside? Thank you so much, Tatiana. First of all, I would like to say thank you for having me here. It's an honor to be in one panel, such distinguished expert. And thank you for the questions. Um, regarding our partnership and during this definitely most difficult, challenging time for our energy market, we can tell that despite the ongoing crisis, Ukraine have con continued collaboration with foreign investors and international partners, and it's not just a word. You are represent international companies and you know that it's really continuing in Ukraine and we are doing such collaboration. We do joint development. We are working together for financial structure and even core construction initiatives. 
and it's bring us to build real projects to keep Ukrainian energy system stable and resilient, and it is important for us. And we have several strategies how we can leverage and maintain such collaboration. First of all, today in Ukraine, we feel that the most uh, best strategies is prioritizing the human resource. When we're speaking about um, technology, when we're speaking about uh, industry, it is easy to focus on the physical assets. But we consider that the main, the, the higher assets in Ukraine, and not only in Ukraine, in energy, it's uh, people, it's their knowledge, it's their skills, it's their dedication. And to combine uh, international and local people can create for us strong team. And this strong team can build robust solutions from technological side, from resilience side, and for growing and development. And another one, it's a um, strategy which we built with foreign in, uh, companies, international partnership. It's leverage new financial models. Um, we are focusing to bring and to combine together government uh, um, authorities and private investors. It's allow us to reach the success of fund, which otherwise can go out of the reach. And... Uh, we're also focusing on the investors who are not just looking the return, but who are looking to have impact in global solution. As we are discussing here in COPE, it's about impact global for the world. And we are focusing on the investors who are believers, not only investor. And in our situation in Ukraine, it is important to leverage such in collaboration and leverage such joint work with international partners. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. No. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Nadia uh, and Victoria. Uh, let's continue with the Ukrainian side uh, of this uh, discussion. Uh, the epicenter group uh, is. Uh, the epicenter group of companies is a prominent player in the Ukrainian market, known for its commitment to sustainability and innovations. Can you tell us about the challenges uh, the Ukrainian company with the agenda in sustainability can have in Ukraine right now and how partnerships may help you to reach your goals? Thank you, Tatiana. Uh, first, let me say that, uh, of course, it's a great honor and privilege being here today and uh, sitting on this stage with such an amazing group. And thank you, Tatiana, for bringing us all together to discuss such a vital topic for Ukraine today, energy transition. Um, I would like quickly add that, yes, business will work and business will do, but please remember that business also needs a support. And, uh, you know, through uh, our 20 years history, actually already more than 20 years, um, we always were fostering partnerships with global and with uh, local partners. And uh, in all our projects, like, for example, um, when we started to build solar power stations, all our initiatives uh, start with a go into the core. We could just install solar panels and go with it, but that's not how we do. We go to the factory, we go to producers, uh, we want to see how it's made, what is the process, what is the supply chain. We ask for reference projects. We go to visit reference projects. And this allows us actually to partner with uh, businesses like ours uh, all around the world. Um, it gives us uh, experience exchange. It gives us knowledge. And we can learn how not like, how to design it, and also how to integrate it, and what are the long-lasting benefits. Of course, this brings a lot of challenges and a lot of opportunities. Um, one of the biggest challenges is here the financing part. And uh, today we all talk about the need of uh, energy transition and uh, we were, for example, the first retail company in Ukraine that uh, stepped into the game. And we did it when nobody did yet. And today we face the problem that uh, the global like, international funding, international support usually focuses on a small scale businesses or public projects. 
and uh, we as a big business kind of falling into gap somewhere in between. But uh, what is underestimated here that as a big business, we support a lot of small and medium enterprises. Uh, we support a lot of individual entrepreneurs that are working with us. And this actually helps them to scale, to grow, to develop. But to be able to keep doing this job, we also need to stay strong. And um, I think that's very important to remember for, for the global community. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh... That's a disaster today. We will work in emerging market. Uh, thank you, Victoria. Uh, let's continue this topic of helping small companies uh, to develop uh, themselves and to develop their businesses and to thrive. Uh, Bonir, my question is to you. Uh, at a time, oops how the Aviva helped start startup companies uh, uh, entering the renewable market. Uh, do you have specific examples? Thank you, for, thank you for this. Yeah, exactly. So we have a big advantage. Aviva has been going for 50, uh, 60, almost 60 years now, right? Always in software. So, and one of the big interesting parts for us are all the new startups that are coming out. And one example we have in the, in the UK where we're working with is a company called Proteum, right? It's a hydrogen uh, company. Uh, they started about three, four years ago, and we started working with them last year. We started very, very small with this company, right? It's when you compare it to some of the other customers, people would think, why are you investing so much time and effort working with these companies? We see these companies that are as the big companies of the future, right? And as you were saying, we need to support and help help these co companies. But one of the very interesting parts was the COO said to us, our main presentations from Aviva, we have one slide like all big companies. These are all the customers we have, the industries we serve and we, who we work with. He's actually taken that slide and he uses it when he presents his company to his investors. He says, we're, look who we're working with. Look who's supporting us, right? We're bringing in all this experience from Aviva, this knowledge from Aviva, and Aviva's taking us on a journey, right? We started with them small. Now we're working on the big plans. Uh, so, for example, we started just with the simulation piece. Now that they're building the facilities, they want to grow and start using our technology further. And we will continue supporting them by, by doing this. And it becomes more of a partnerships. And I've noticed in uh, the last six months or so, I've become more like an ambassador for these companies. So when I come to events like this, I'm talking more about them as than I talk about our own company because they're doing amazing things. Yes, they're helping us with decarbonization, but it's very interesting, very cool technologies they're coming up with. Highview, who I used as an example earlier, these there are there are so many opportunities out there. I wish I was just coming out of university now, because the opportunities out there. If you have a great idea, a lot of the big companies are there to support you. Um, and I'm speaking from myself. I'm speaking from Schneider Electric as well. Right, we're there to support and help these companies. Of course, there's a business imperative, right? We're not doing it just as a charity. But you help them, they help you, and we, we all grow together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Roger, uh, in the first uh, sustainability report of G. Vernona, it was said that the mission of the company is to electrify and decarbonize the economy. Uh, this message is... Uh, probably the most important even now uh, than it was before. Uh, can you tell us about how do you innovate? How uh, is your company uh, do its innovations and how do you promote that through different partnerships? Thank you very much. And so innovation is key, right? If we're going to succeed on this goal of electrification, decarbonization, we have to do it through innovation. We have technologies today 
And for GE Vernova, again, we produce 25, help produce 25% of the world's energy. We're pretty much invested in everywhere you'd want us to be invested. We make the world's most efficient gas turbines. They've been critical to Ukraine for keeping the lights on. It's been our honor to help provide them on an emergency basis. Um, we provide nuclear energy. We have renewable energy. We look forward to building wind turbines in Ukraine so that they can improve the the the, the clean part of their grid and, and lower the carbon emissions of their grid. And we make the electrification equipment, which has also been critical for Ukraine, connecting, syncing up to the European grid and enabling the reliability, reliability as well, software as well, to help manage all the grid in real time. So those are the technologies we have today, and those technologies are imperative for electrification. They're imperative for helping to improve the trajectory of climate change, because as I mentioned, we're lowering the carbon intensity of the grid. The more we put capacity on, we're pulling down the carbon intensity of the grid, re reducing emitting less greenhouse gas emissions to produce the same amount of electricity. But those technologies alone will not get us to our decarbonization goals. They don't get us to net zero. They don't get us to the 2050 goals. So we have to be innovating for the breakthrough technologies of tomorrow. And so what we're doing today is we're working in labs, we're working in research centers, experimenting and trying things so that we can commercialize products for the next decade. So those include small modular reactors, hydrogen, carbon capture, direct air capture. And we would love it for Ukraine to, you know, build small modular reactors in Ukraine to make them part of carbon capture hubs, hydrogen hubs and things like that. So these are the innovations we're working on. And when it comes to partnerships, we can't do any of this alone. We may be you know, 25% of the world's energy, 75,000 employees in 100 countries. But everything is done through partnerships. It's done through pi private public partnerships. It's done through partnerships with the private sector um, so that we can succeed. And I, I think Ukraine, again, they're at the leading edge of this. Um, they're at the front line of this. And an example there is we need to help make sure Ukraine has as much power as it, as it can for the winter and other purposes. So it, to me, the best example of public-private partnership I've ever seen was our ability to find turbines that are mounted on the back of truck trailers so we can move them around the country strategically. They can power about 100,000 homes. But all we can do is produce the turbines. So our partners in the U.S. government helped us acquire those turbines for Ukraine, helped us ship them to the border. And then our partners in Ukraine, both in the private sector and the public sector, took it from there, got them installed, got them operating. They're, they're operating a baseload power way beyond their capacity. And that's kind of the example of the types of new, new partnerships we need, not only for Ukraine, but for the world, where everybody is bringing kind of their best expertise. Because if you take a technology like carbon capture, we only have a small part of that innovation supply chain. Um, there's people who build the pipelines. There's people who are the off takers. There's people who focus on the storage. And so we all have to partner together with incentives from the public sector, with policies from the public sector to solve for this. So partnership really is the future if we're going to succeed on that innovation path. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll go back to that, uh, that the partnership in the future. Uh, it's our current situation and it will be even more important in the future. Uh, Nadia, can you share your examples uh, of partnerships, uh, collaboration with different stakeholders? Uh, thank you, Tatiana. Um, I would like to say that every our projects which we undertake, it's about story, about international collaboration. And it's not just a word. I see Saudi Arabia near us. And that's why I can give you one example about that. Our company with company from Saudi Arabia, we implement together the, the largest solar power plant in Ukraine. And now we work it side by side with joint team as a one team. And today that project is not just about uh, essential energy which for the community we serve but it's also the example about international collaboration about success in joint work and the project difficult we pass it all circumstances despite coronavirus war in ukraine but we pass it successfully together both of team and this is a real example and we have numbers of lessons from such as example from, from this company from Saudi Arabia, from another company from Saudi Arabia, from Germany, from Czech Republic with whom we are work. We have such key lessons that combination of local insights and international technology is one of the main key for the success story. And it's very difficult to find financing, especially when we're speaking about large scale projects. And through work together, we can 
pass all the circumstances under our journey. And we at SPP Development Ukraine, we are pretty sure that only joint partnership, only international collaboration between teams, insights, technology, knowledge is only the one way to the success story. And for sure in Ukraine, we are very welcoming all our partners from foreign countries. We need your technology. We need your knowledge. We need your expertise. And in, from our side, we can give for you our deeply involvement and in our insights from the local uh, um, issues. And for sure, our big desire and our and our commitment which work we are doing and we are very we, we believe we know that we will have huge story about successful projects in ukraine in future coming time for sure thank you thank you so much nadia for the great examples and victoria uh, what about epicenter uh examples of partnership and how international partnership can help your company to develop your sustainability agenda. Thank you, Tatiana. So um, I already started to share a little bit about uh, how, uh, we, how we foster partnerships in our renewable energy projects. So as I said, yes, we collaborate with many global and uh, local partners uh, for experience exchange, for knowledge exchange. But what I would like to add here that, so as a sustainability at scale, uh, so far we installed more than 20,000 solar panels and we generate 15 megawatt uh, annually for our consumption. So, but this is actually much more and much broader than just uh, us using renewable energy for our operations. Uh, from two perspectives. First, uh, only our retail uh, company consumes around 1.5% uh, of electricity of the whole retail sector in Ukraine. So our co commitment to go green means that we support Ukraine in a country's commitment to align with uh, global climate goals. And the second part is that that uh, green energy that we are using uh, we are now covering around 30% of our electricity need. It means that this is the amount of uh, conventional sources that we are not using. So, which means that uh, the sources can be used for community needs, for public needs. And I think this is very important. So we are looking here in the more long-term perspective and more long-term impact. And... Uh, about the practical examples, another example that I would like to highlight, for example, uh, Epicenter was the first company that initiated the uh, batteries recycling project. So for this, we actually, what we try to do, it's uh, bringing European practices into Ukrainian market, uh, aligning also Ukraine, bringing Ukraine closer to sustainability practices in Europe. What we did, we were uh, collaborating with uh, global producers like Duracell, Varta, GP, and uh, with their support and with our common efforts, we um, collected 12 tons of batteries that were sent to recyclable facilities. So we brought producers here into the game to be responsible for the lifetime of their product. And that was very innovative and new for Ukrainian market. But, and as the, as the previous example, this project also is more long-term because uh, the, our partners from the industry, from retail industry and our partners from other industries, they joined us through this journey and they also got inspired and started to, to implement more sustainable practices in their operations. Thank you so much, Victoria. Uh, let's sum up what we've heard today. Uh, we talk about that we don't need to re-innovate things again. We talked about that business is a driver of changes, no matter the political circumstances. Uh, we talked about support of small enterprises, and this is uh, the goal and mission of big business, actually, to support smaller ones uh, to let them grow with the big businesses. And uh, we talked about partnership as the future. Of course, we partner to today, but uh, for tomorrow, when the world is 
developing uh, on the exponential uh, development. Uh, th there is no time to re-innovate uh, re something. Uh, we need to collaborate with smaller ones. Uh, we need to collaborate with competitors. We need to collaborate across industries and it will help us uh, to grow quicker. Um, learn lessons from partners. Uh, that That's great example to learn even here in this uh, panel discussion. What uh, different companies uh, have been doing and how we can implement this experience in our companies. And we definitely all need financial support. Uh, we need investors, but in partnership, we can achieve this goal much quicker and in more efficient way. So the outcome of this session is partnership is a core of any business and we need to continue doing our best to partner with different stakeholders. We have some minutes for questions. Uh, maybe if somebody may have uh, questions to private sector representatives, it would be great. If not, uh, we have something from Victoria, I think. Thank you, Tatiana. So, you know, um, Epicenter Group in, uh, includes uh, retail, agriculture, renewable energy uh, production. And today we brought this beautiful piece. It's a ceramic tile uh, made in our factory near Kiev. But um, it looks just like a beautiful, nice ceramic tile with a logo of Coop and Ukraine Pavilion. But it has very deep and very meaningful story. So this ceramic tile is produced from the sand in Kherson. And when Kherson was occupied, um, ceramic tile all around Europe was stocked because actually um, in this industry, the sand from Kherson is used uh, all around Europe. And when it was deoccupied, we were happy to renew our production and make this beautiful piece to bring to our partners in a global compact network as a symbol of uh, actually cherishing international partnerships. And it's my great pleasure to give it to you, Tatiana, to many more projects together. Thank you so much, Victoria. It's great pleasure. And uh, my origin is from the Kherson region. And uh, for me, it's like, a remembrance of home. Thank you so much. That's very personal. Uh, yeah, we'll keep it in our uh, museum of global compact uh, in Kiev. Uh, thank you so much for this great discussion. Uh, thank you for your time for being great partners of Ukraine and helping us to renew our businesses and renew our country. Have a great day and continuation of COP twenty nine.